Is hydrogen power in tanks meant for environmental protection? Wrong. It's for stealth. South Korea has launched a new tank, the K3, which looks somewhat like the PL-01, featuring the same hexagonal armor and a focus on stealth. Of course, the K3 also introduces a new feature, hydrogen power. Environmentalists may applaud this as absolutely zero pollution, but from a combat perspective, the purpose of using hydrogen power is not environmental protection, but infrared stealth. In this video, we'll discuss how the K3 achieves stealth, whether hydrogen powered tanks are safe, and how a stealth tank like the K3 would operate on the future battlefield. The K3 tank was jointly developed by Hyundai Rotom and Hyundai Motor Company. In terms of design, it looks far more advanced than Germany's KF-51 Panther, the Franco-German YMBT, and Russia's T-14. It features all the standard configurations of a modern tank, including an unmanned turret, a three-person crew, and a 130mm smoothbore gun, while also incorporating some innovations. The K3 follows a traditional layout, with the driver's cabin in the front, the turret in the middle, and the power pack at the rear. However, the crew seating arrangement is notable. The driver, commander, and gunner sit side by side in an armored compartment at the front of the hull. This is not a new design. Tanks like the T-14 and M-1X have similar setups. What sets the K-3 apart is its autonomous operation capability. It can run autonomously without a driver. Just assign a destination, and the K-3 will navigate there on its own. For detecting and engaging enemies, the K-3 uses AI models to intelligently analyze the battlefield and identify threats. Once it detects an enemy, the K-3 sends a request to engage. The operator simply clicks on the hostile target on the screen, and the tank's gun automatically selects the appropriate ammunition and fires. This dramatically increases efficiency, speed, and responsiveness, essentially making combat as straightforward as playing a video game. Such a convenient design raises the question, can anyone operate it? The K3 doesn't need dedicated roles like driver or gunner. A single operator can take over the tank and handle driving, shooting, and other tasks. This means even if there are casualties among the crew, the tank's combat capabilities won't be affected. As for the K3's firepower, the 130mm smoothbore gun isn't particularly innovative. In terms of defense, it features standard equipment for next-generation tanks, including laser warning receivers, missile warning systems, active protection systems, and anti-drone interference systems. The most prominent feature of the K-3 is its hydrogen power, marking the first time hydrogen has been used in a tank. Since the birth of tanks, engines have roughly gone through three stages, the gasoline engine era, the diesel engine era, and the current coexistence of diesel and gas turbine engines. Most tanks today, such as the Leopard 2, Leclerc, Merkava, and K2, use diesel engines while gas turbines are found in only the T-80 and M1. Compared to diesel engines, gas turbines do have some advantages. They can start in just one minute, while diesel engines require preheating. They are also structurally simpler and easier to maintain, though their downside is high fuel consumption. However, both diesel engines and gas turbines have issues with high noise and excessive waste heat. Hydrogen power eliminates these problems. As a green energy source, hydrogen combustion produces exhaust gas that contains only water and oxygen, with no carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxides, or other impurities. Its energy utilization efficiency is higher, with thermal efficiency reaching over 80%, compared to 60% to 70% for conventional fuels. If liquid hydrogen fuel cells are used, hydrogen can be converted into electricity through electrochemical reactions, which is then converted into mechanical energy, achieving thermal efficiency of over 90%. The only emission is water. This means that the infrared radiation produced by the K3's engine can be minimized. In addition, the K3's appearance is similar to Poland's PL-01, featuring hexagonal armor modules. It's unclear whether the K3 also has PL-01-like functionality, which captures environmental parameters such as temperature and humidity to match the surrounding environment. 
Combined with drastically reduced exhaust heat, it could achieve near-perfect infrared stealth. Furthermore, the K3 can operate in a silent mode. The hydrogen fuel cell operates by using hydrogen from the tank to generate electricity, which drives the electric motor. The fuel cell itself is akin to building blocks of stacked single cells. With no mechanical transmission parts, there is no mechanical wear or failure. This makes it more durable, easier to maintain, and much quieter. Once stealth is achieved, the next consideration is the safety of hydrogen power. Hydrogen has an explosive range in air between 4% and 75.6% by volume. Within this range, any ignition source can cause an explosion. For this reason, Toyota's Mirai hydrogen fuel vehicle added a fusible plug valve to its hydrogen storage tank. Under high temperature and pressure, the plug melts to release hydrogen, preventing tank explosions. The K3 likely employs similar measures. However, this doesn't guarantee the tank's safety on the battlefield. If the hydrogen tank is penetrated, no protective measure can prevent an explosion. Beyond safety, logistics could be another potential drawback for the K3. Installing hydrogen storage devices in the tank is a challenge. Hydrogen embrittlement can severely corrode storage tanks, leading to high storage costs. Additionally, the logistical support system may be affected. Tanks like the Leopard 2 or M1 can refuel with diesel, gasoline, or even jet fuel at standard fueling stations. However, a hydrogen-powered K3 would require dedicated refueling systems. Since hydrogen refueling infrastructure is currently underdeveloped, the K3 would need dedicated supply vehicles equipped with high-pressure hydrogen storage tanks. These supply vehicles lack stealth capabilities and likely have thin armor, making them vulnerable to enemy drone attacks. Currently, tank development has reached a bottleneck. Even newly introduced tanks by various countries share this limitation. In terms of upgrades, whether it's the T-14, KF-51, M1X, or Yembiti, the focus remains on greater firepower and stronger armor. Additional features might include hybrid power systems or drone integration. For example, the KF-51 uses a 130mm gun and carries multiple drones, while the T-14 emphasizes its unmanned turret and larger caliber gun. The M1X adopts a hybrid diesel-electric system. While these features improve performance to some extent, they don't represent a qualitative leap forward. In the current battlefield environment, there is a significant imbalance between offense and defense. Tank armor is no longer effective against modern anti-tank weapons. This is one of the reasons why the weight of tanks like the T-14 and KF-51 has been noticeably reduced. Similarly, the K-3's combat weight is only 55 tons, compared to the 70 tons or more of current main battle tanks when fully equipped with additional armor. Compared to other tanks powered by diesel engines, the hydrogen-powered K-3 is expected to have better mobility. Even at low speeds, hydrogen fuel cells can provide high torque for the tank. Combined with its infrared stealth capabilities, the K-3 could serve as a command center, managing battlefield operations and coordinating the deployment of drones and unmanned combat vehicles. South Korea has designed the K-3 to work in tandem with an unmanned tank operated by the crew to protect the K-3 during various combat missions. Other countries are also actively developing unmanned tanks, such as the USM-5, Turkey's Shadow Rider, and Russia's Uranus series. One critical factor to consider is anti-jamming capability. The current electromagnetic environment on the Ukraine-Russia battlefield is already highly complex. On future battlefields, as combat methods evolve, electronic warfare will become a focal point. Unmanned tanks will need robust anti-jamming systems to remain effective in such scenarios. In summary, the future of tank operations will likely be dominated by unmanned systems, with tanks serving as command hubs. In the short term, this transition will start with unmanned turrets, supported by modular and stealth designs. Tanks may also be equipped with their own drones to enhance situational awareness to the greatest extent possible.